Michelle Vidal-Franco and today we are joined with one of a really good friend of mine. She has been in the previous issue of Panda Fashion Magazine. It is the one and only Renu S. Prisou. Uh, if you could tell our viewers a little bit in a few words, a little bit about yourself, what you do. So uh, my name is Renu and uh, I am a professor of sociology in the Department of Sociology at the University of Windsor. My area of research is on self-worth and the sense of self. And I wrote a book to that effect, uh, The Mastery of You, which has really caught on and uh, people are really relating to the whole idea of taking care of themselves and uh, developing and having a strong sense of self-worth because we know it is only when you have a strong uh, self-confidence and uh, you believe in your ability to thrive that's the only way you can thrive and move forward in life that's basically what I do what is the inspiration behind what you do what what made you do what you do right now you know I I can say that uh, what what inspires me is people humanity People who are not afraid to leave their comfort zones, people who are willing to make a difference in the world, people who want to see other people be happy and uh, who want to spread the word and who want to, uh, who want others to be happy and who ultimately, who ultimately appreciates kindness. I think kindness is such a, it's such a rare quality and we talk a lot about kindness, but to actually practice it and uh, to help other people to understand how their kind acts touch one another is very important. So that's what really inspires me when I see anybody doing anything of a kind nature, anything that can help other people, because it is so rare today. We are, as humans, we're very selfish and uh, oftentimes we become very self-absorbed but uh, with the mastery of you when we learn about ourselves that is through self-absorption we also come to learn not only about ourselves but about other people and ultimately how to treat them positively how to treat them kindly can you tell us a little bit about your past work what uh, kind of uh, other projects were you working on Right. So uh, I've always been interested in the area of self-worth, which is where I've done all my research. But some of the, uh, I guess, the pinnacle of my career, some of the highlights, if you will, was when I was invited to do a TEDx talk on uh, self-worth education. And uh, that made me, it really gave me confidence in what I was doing because I realized People want to hear, they want to hear what I have to say. And apart from doing the TEDx talk, I was also invited to TED Women, where I was able to discuss and talk about the topics of, especially for women, having a strong sense of, uh, a sense of identity, a strong sense of self and who they are, especially with all the roles, the various roles that we are playing. Oftentimes what happens is, we forget about ourselves and uh so i was you know in in the context of ted i was able to really bring back to the table and bring back to the attention of people that hey women they need time out they need to take care of themselves because it is only then we are in uh, we are able to take care of others what really pushed you to go and become a writer so yes, I, I, I guess as a PhD student, a master's student, you do a heck of a lot of writing. And uh, I so what, apart from the academic writing, I also write poetry. And of course I wrote uh, my nonfiction book. So as a writer, I think writing is the essence of who I am. I have to write, it, it's just something I must do. And I think it's important that everybody is able to write and express themselves. You see, when we write, what we're doing is we're putting on paper, we're putting down our thoughts and our ideas. And it is only when we write and we share these thoughts and ideas that they could get out there. 
to make change and for other people to connect with. So for me, writing is, it, it's something that I must do. It's not, it's not something I do in my spare time and it's fun, for fun. And of course, writing is a lot of fun for people who enjoy it, but it's the essence of who I am. And that's because I want, I really believe in the positive aspect of humanity. And I really believe that we can change the world. And one of the ways in doing that, changing the world for the better, is writing about it and expressing it and then hoping other people can connect with what I'm writing about. Yeah, you're giving me goosebumps. I love it. <laughs> Artist or an influencer that really inspires you? So Shelby, you know, I think what inspires me in terms of people is when when I see people doing things to help other people and, and strong women, because as women, we have to go through so many various bumps and, uh, you know, we have so many crossroads to get to where we want to be. So strong women, women who are pushing the envelope, women who are putting a dent on earth so that they can show other women that, hey, you know, I'm able to do this. I'm able to accomplish this. And it inspires other women to move forward, to move forth. And so I wouldn't say there's one particular artist per se. There's artists, of course, so many people have met their pinnacle. We have millionaires and scientists and engineers and technologists. So many people have met their pinnacle but they haven't given back to the world. They haven't used their influence and their power to help humanity. So for me, people who have reached that pinnacle, that point, and then they're giving back and they're helping us to better ourselves, those are the people, and especially strong women, uh, are my biggest inspiration. Just like off, you know, Beside the note, beside like the the whole writing thing, because we're fashion magazine, right? Uh, is there any kind of like a fashion brand that you love, that you follow, and you love wearing? If there, right. is, tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, Shelby, I always said, I always said, if I was not a professor, I would be, uh, I would be a fashion designer or at least an interior designer. And, and I guess there's the creative component as well that comes across in my writing. But I'm really loving these days. I'm really loving Tory Burch just because of the simplicity and uh, you can wear her clothes to work. You could wear it casually. And then there are also some, some very pretty pieces you could wear more formally. So I'm really liking Tory Burch. I also, you cannot get away from the classic Chanel and I, I admire Coco Chanel. She was a woman of substance <laughs> that we could all learn from. But uh, my Chanel scarf is still one of my, my wardrobe essentials, one of my wardrobe favorites. And so of course, when you talk about haute couture, definitely I, I have a sensibility. I love haute couture in, in the context, um, in that context, Chanel. and. Another another fashion brand that's been on my radar that I re, uh, that I'm really liking right now is Altuzara, Altuzara, and that's just because they're they're uh, avant-garde looking dresses. They're so flowy and they're prints. It's pretty exciting to see what they come out with every season. Altuzara. Altuzara, okay, I'll definitely check them out. <laughs> I'm gonna go to a little bit of, like a heavier note here. I want to talk to you about 2020. It was like oh, yeah. the craziest year on planet Earth for the 21st century. How did you cope with all the changes and challenges? As with everybody, 2020 was a challenge. It, it was a, a, a time in human history that's been unprecedented, we could say. And uh, we all, we all had adversities to face. For me, I found that it was exceedingly difficult on a lot of levels. For one, I was uh, now teaching and uh, doing my university instruction online. So many students, as well as myself, who have been used to being in the classroom, now we were grappling with 
learning and doing everything online. So the teaching part of it was an exceedingly uh, difficult and challenging component. And then I found that if, and I'm sure many women and, and yourself too, you can relate to in reality, because we were stuck at home, I was in my kitchen living out every role of my life all at once in the same place. So I was on my laptop in my kitchen, being a professor, being a mom, being a, you know, a daughter and a friend and everything else all at once with everybody else around me doing, trying to do the same thing online. So it was, it was very difficult, but I have to say that as humans, we're also very resilient and uh, very flexible. And uh, I'm, you know, as a Canadian, I'm very proud that of the way we conducted ourselves during the pandemic. Uh, I'm proud of the way people listened and that they were able to, you know, go with what the public health initiatives were saying, and they respected that. And I think ultimately we we found Zoom, we found we found ways and means of connecting, which is awesome. And uh, while it was a challenge, I think we all learned quite a bit from it as well, right? So it was a challenge, but at the same time, uh, usually it is the challenges that really make us make us become better, right? Pushes us further. So it wasn't all bad. I don't think it was all bad. When we, when we sit and we reflect, we can think, of course, a pandemic is a horrible thing. Uh, and we worry about people's health, but at the same time, there were so many other pos positives to come out of it. Yeah. Well, that is such a nice way for you to put it that, you know, it's not all that bad. There is always right. like a positive side to everything. Could you please tell us a little bit about maybe a challenge that you faced in the past and uh, what did you do to overcome it? Yes, uh, I think all women, we have many, many challenges that we, we face and we own up to. For me, I think it's being a mom, first and foremost. I am a mom, that's my identity. And uh, it's also wanting and grappling to become more and do more. So I'm a mom, but I'm also very ambitious and uh, I, I love my work as a professor. I love my work as a researcher. So it's making the time, it's finding the time to spend with my children while trying to do all these other things and essentially trying to change the world uh, on my, you know, <laughs> on my, in my own little way, if you will. So I think uh, as many, as many people can relate to both moms and dads, when you have this extra role and you have these people that are dependent on you, these little people that are dependent on you, uh, it's very, very difficult. But a lot of it has to do with balancing your time as well. But I think one of the things that has really made this challenge, if you will, uh, being a mom and achieving, one of the things that has made the challenge, uh, it's made the challenge a little more positive, if you will. It, it, it's been a positive challenge in that my kids, when they recognize what I'm doing or they see something and they say, hey, mama, that's really cool. And we're so proud of you that you achieved this or that you achieved that. On the one hand, they don't realize how much it took for me to get there, how much heartache it takes when I have to leave them or not spend as much time with them to write something, for example, or to meet a deadline. But then for them to see it and to say, hey, you did a great job, mama. I think, I think you know, those, those types of challenges when uh, when they're also recognized, I think they become very meaningful. Yeah, and it's also very satisfying when you're responsible for a human being and you're raising a child, he or she growing and you know thriving. It's it's probably like the best feeling in the world. So it is. Good to see. <laughs> is there anything that you're working on at the moment? And uh, if there is, uh, please tell us a little bit about it. Right now, um, I'm hoping to do the mastery of you number two, but again, it's a matter of time to get, make the time to get writing. 
But uh, I've also done a few children's book and uh, a couple children's books, and they're available on Kindle on Amazon. And the first one I've written is called How to Be Kind During a Pandemic for Children. And uh, the second uh, kids book I've written is uh, 20 Ways That a Human is Better Than a Device. <laughs> 20 Ways a Human is Better Than a Device. Just trying to encourage children to get off, to disconnect, and to realize there's so much more out there. <laughs> much lighter note, that's what I've been doing uh, these days. I just recently completed those two books. Okay, wow, that's amazing. So, 20 ways how a human is better than a device. Yes. <laughs> what was the second one? Uh, how to be kind during a pandemic. Okay, yeah, okay. So, we'll include the links to those books in the description of, of the video. So, you guys are mm -hmm. welcome to go and purchase them on Kindle. Also, Renu, where can we find you? Uh, are you on social media? Uh, can, do you have a Facebook, Instagram account? Where can we find you? So on, on Facebook, I have a Facebook page and it's called Inspiring Self-Worth by Renu Prasad. So that's pretty clear cut. People are welcome to go on my page and like it and follow me. And uh, I put up every day, I try to put up an inspirational saying uh, that people can use as they're going about their daily lives. And then I'm on Twitter and my Twitter handle is uh, at Prasad Renu, at Prasad Renu. And then on Instagram, my Instagram is Renu.Prasad, Renu.Prasad. And then of course I'm on LinkedIn. You could find me by searching my name, Renu Prasad. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we'll definitely include all those links as well in the description. And uh, is there a place that we can find more of your work? Are you selling uh, your books on Amazon at the moment? So right now my book is available on Amazon, but it's I've, from what I've heard, it's taking quite a long time for people to get deliveries. So what I'm telling people to do is uh, send me an email and I personally will ship my book and uh, make sure it gets to them in a timely manner. So my email for that, I, I guess you could include it, but it's renuprasad at yahoo.com. Perfect. Wow. And so you're doing like a delivery from this, you're getting <laughs> delivery from the source yes well i guess and, and i guess that means i'll be able to sign it as well so that's even better that's amazing okay um you guys you gotta check renu and her work her work is amazing super inspiring renu thank you so much for joining us it was so inspiring and really like heartwarming to have you and to see you again everybody if you love this video please give us a thumbs up subscribe follow us on youtube and social media uh, don't forget to comment and share the video with your friends if you want to see another exciting video please feel free to comment and let us know who you want us to have next on our show again renu it was a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Shelby. It was a ple pleasure being here. Yeah, everyone, thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll see you in our next video. Take care.